This is part 2 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is document.ready function and when to use it and the difference between window.load and document.ready functions. Document.ready is a jQuery event. It fires as soon as the DOM is fully loaded and ready to be manipulated by script. This is the earliest point in the page load process where the script can safely access elements in the HTML DOM. This event is fired before all the images, CSS, frames, etc. are fully loaded on the page. The example that we see here is the same example that we worked with in part 1 of this video series. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So the code that we have here, basically this is trying to find an element with ID button 1 and attach a click event handler to it. And inside the click event handler, we are displaying this alert message. So basically, this piece of code is wrapped inside this document.ready function. So what is this document.ready function going to do? This is going to ensure that by the time this piece of code is executed, the browser DOM is fully loaded. What do we mean by that? By that we mean, you know, by the time this piece of code is executed, all the HTML elements that are present on this page are loaded into the browser document object model. So this script can find the element with ID button 1 and attach the click event handler to it. So at this point, when we click this button, we should get the alert as expected. Now, what do you think is going to happen if we remove this document.ready function? Okay, so at the moment, we don't have this code present inside document.ready. And if you look at the script element, the script element is present before the HTML button element. So by the time the script is executed, this HTML element is not loaded into the browser DOM. So this script will not be able to find the button control with ID button 1. And as a result, it won't be able to attach the click event handler. And because of that, when we save these changes, and when we reload the page, and when we click the button, notice we don't get the alert as expected right? That's because by the time the script is executed, this button is not loaded into the browser DOM, so the script is not able to find that button and attach the click event handler to it. So, how can we solve it? There are two ways. One way we have already seen it, you know, wrap the code inside document.ready function. What is document.ready function going to do? It's going to ensure that by the time the script that is present inside document.ready function is executed, the browser DOM is fully loaded. So the script can find the elements that it is looking for and do whatever it has to do. So that's one option. The other option is to place the script element at the bottom of the page just before the closing body element. Okay, so now the script is present, you know, at the bottom of the page just before the closing body element. So this script is present after the HTML button element. So by the time the script is executed, the button is loaded into the browser DOM, meaning the script can find it and attach the click event handler to it. So at this point, if we save these changes, reload the page, and then once we click this button, we should get the alert. There we go. Window.load. Window.load event fires when the DOM as well as all the content on the page, images, CSS, frames, etc. are fully loaded. Since the vendor load event waits for images, CSS, etc. to be fully loaded, this event fires after ready event. When does the ready event fire? You know, ready event fires as soon as the DOM is loaded. It does not wait for images, CSS, frames, etc. to be fully loaded on the page. So, you know, ready event fires much before window.load event. Actually, let's prove that with an example. So let's get rid of this HTML button element. We don't need it anymore. So let's cut the script element and move it to the head section. And within the head section, dollar, actually, let's use the window object first, window.load. So when the load event fires, we want to execute a function. And when the window event is fired, we want to display, you know, window loaded message using JavaScript alert. 
Okay. Similarly, when document dot ready event is fired, we want to display this message DOM loaded. Okay. Notice first we have window load and then we have docu document dot ready. Okay. So that's the order. But then we know that ready event fires much before window.load. Window.load will wait for all the images, CSS, frames, etc. to be loaded, whereas ready event uh, fires immediately after the browser DOM is loaded. So when we save these changes and when we refresh this page, we expect DOM loaded message first and then window loaded. In most cases, the script can be run as soon as the DOM hierarchy has been fully constructed. So ready is usually the best place to write your JavaScript code. However, in your application, there could be scenarios where you should be using window.load over document.ready. And here is one such example. Let's say we want to get the actual image dimensions, that is height and width. Now, if we have to get the actual image height and width, then we will have to wait until the image is fully loaded. So the jQuery code to get the height and width should be in window.load event handler. So let's look at an example of that. I already have an image here, so let's copy this image and paste it within our application. So let's drag and drop this image within the body section. And within our head section, we're going to write the script to get the height and width. Uh, but let's also include a div element here to display our height and width. And let's give it an ID. Let's call it div1. And let's give an ID to the image. Let's call it img1. So within our script, dollar vendo.load. We want to execute a function. And basically here, we are going to find an element with ID div1 and ID selector in jQuery's hash. So I'm going to use hash. So basically this hash is telling, um, you know, find an element within this page by ID. That is document.get element by ID div1. We'll talk about selectors in detail in our upcoming video session. So find the div and set the HTML. OK, so what do we want to display within the div? We want to display height. So height equals. Now we want to get the image height. So I'm going to use the ID selector again, which is the hash symbol. So dollar hash and the ID of the image element is img1. So basically we are saying document.get element by ID image1 and give me its height. Okay. And then to that, let's append HTML break. And then we want high, uh, width. So width equals the same thing find an element with image1 ID and then get its width. And to get the width, we use width function. All right. So with all these changes, let's reload the page. And look at this. As soon as the image is loaded, we get the height and width of the image. Those are the actual dimensions. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I use document.ready instead of window.load, let's see that. So document.ready, let's save these changes and let's reload the page. Look at that, it displays height as zero and width as zero. Why is that? By the time document.ready event is fired, you know, this event is not going to wait until all the images and CSS are loaded. OK, so by the time this piece of code is executed, the image is not loaded within this image element. So that's why it reads the height and width as 0. OK, but whereas if we change that back 
to vendor.load. So this event is fired after all the images are loaded. So it's able to get the actual height and width. So now when we save this, we should get the actual height and width. Thank you for listening and have a great day.